Susan, if you want to switch your camera off for now, we'll introduce you and then you can switch your camera on. How do I switch the camera off? So if you move, you, oh, you're alive now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Never mind. It's, it's all good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry. No, you don't. No, no, no. It's all good. Don't, don't worry. It's funny. <laughs> Well, yeah. oh, here, I can do it. Do you want me to do it now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> All right. That's great. Um, so that's the light. My feet should go. The link. Should I be here soon? Okay. Hey, guys. Um, so we're live here now. We're oh. just going to hang out. For a few more minutes, have people join in, and then um, we have uh, we have someone special joining in, which some of you might have already taken. Happy. Oh, thanks, Peter. Our people have joined in, and they have yeah. started commenting on my beard already. <laughs> We're. All, I'm very upset about this beard non beard situation. I think. Yeah, for some reason, it's a public <laughs> thing. It was just a spring clean. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, God. No. <coughs> right. Let's make sure. Oh, we we'll just wait for a few more people to join in, and then we can go from there straight away. Um. <laughs> Thanks, Nala. Really good. I'm glad you can't see the comments. That's great. Oh, me? <laughs> yeah. I'll share the link. I think that I would be... That. I think... I'm, it's because I'm logged on my computer. Sorry, I'll just... I'll that would just, be great. Um, hi, Gail. Hi, Peter. Hi, some of you have already seen who we have today. Hi, Melinda. I think there's a bit of a lag as well. So sometimes... So there will be a bit of delay between we us answering your questions um again we're gonna try and be loud and clear and i will try and not mumble um cool we're you getting there um so essentially today we'll just talk about a few different things from our side and uh then we have um we have a guest today that we'll join in she's one of uh one of our best artists um on Putham. you probably all of you know and have seen her work um, oh sorry sorry um, good good to see that the sound is much better today um we have done nothing different so i don't know i don't know what's happened there which is great um yeah sarah has a few things that she wants to talk about um once uh towards the uh, end of the uh, end of the webinar okay. um and we'll take it from, from there. there cool um if you do if you guys do have any general questions like not specific to the conversation today feel free to post um at the bottom of the video uh not in the chat um because the chat the the public comments can be seen um, later on as well without having to watch the video so we can easily answer them mm -hmm. um, but feel free to put it in the chat as well like it's all good um, our team monitors them as well so um, if we are talking they, these guys can answer the video um, answer the questions as well quite nicely yeah. um, cool um, so we're just heading towards a very good month um, so things are always a bit busy mm -hmm. and a bit crazy um, come the end of the month yeah yeah um, just following the Sydney pop-up, again, we still have we still have been thinking about um, pop-ups in the future, but also sort of get-togethers, at least starting in Melbourne. Um, that will probably be in the next week or two. Um, we haven't organized. Yeah, we haven't organized anything solid yet, but we will get there. Um, Cool. I think we're good to go. It's two okay, minutes, cool. so we can start now. So let's get right into it. We'll start with our guest of the webinar, <laughs> um, Susie T or Susan Trudinger. 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 <laughs> um, here That's we right. Are. Here we go. All right. She we'll make is. You... All right, Susan. Um, so a start. You start. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Hi, everybody who's there. Um, it's nice to be on this webinar. Um, I'm just going to talk mostly about 
um, my relative, well, success on um, Blue Thumb. In fact, I've been very successful on Blue Thumb and <coughs> um, I've been very fortunate to uh, have sold quite a lot of paintings over the last, I think it's the third year. To start with, I, I was working full time and I only so was, I was only doing sort of small small paintings on uh, paper and canvas. Um, but I wanted to put those on other websites, so I did. Um, over I think it was over a year and I just didn't have any success. I think I sold one maybe on one website. I had an Etsy shop for a while. Um, then I found Blue Thumb on Facebook. Um, through a, a, a sort of a friend I used to know when I was living in Armadale. And I thought, will I, will I try it, will I, will I, I didn't know. Yeah, I'll give it a last, one last go. So that's what I did. And bingo, I sold something the first, the first time I posted my work on there and I was over the moon. I just couldn't believe it. In fact, I thought it was a bit of a scam at first. <laughs> because I had been scammed before um, on other websites and, yeah, I was just so chuffed and sold this painting straight away. Um, now, I was only a weekend painter, so I didn't really have a lot of work, uh, but I had one follower who started buying several pieces and over the next few months that's she, she just bought one or two or maybe three or four and then it it started the ball rolling, rolling for me. And then I started working harder at the weekends, producing more work. And I was posting, you know, every couple of weeks or once a month and then accumulating a larger body of work. Now, what I did was had I had very affordable prices on, on my paintings. Um, a lot of people said that the prices were too low, but the affordable prices, I wanted to sell paintings that, that, that just people could afford to buy, just just everyday people, um, just not people with a lot of money. So um, so I started posting every week and then all of a sudden I started selling a lot. And um, it was sort of, it was hard to keep up with demand for a while there. And gradually my, the number of followers um, increased and grew and, you know, it just took time. It just took time, but it happened. So my, um, I was able to change my circumstances at work and I cut down my hours so I had more time to paint. And now I work only one day a week and I'm going to fully retire early next year. And this is all because of, I have to say it, Blue Thumb. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've, been lucky. I've, I've been successful and I've, I've, made, I've made a good profit over the last, you know, three or so, three years. And, um, you know, I feel like I can retire. Let's just hope it keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also started, you know, during this time posting on Blue Thumb, I also started posting, uh, I set up a, a, a Facebook page, special page just for, um, for my paintings. And I had a little bit of success. Don't have many followers there, but I, you know, I sold a couple of a couple of paintings um, through through Facebook, and then um, I discovered Instagram. I didn't even know Instagram existed, so I had an Instagram page, and then I opened a business page and started posting, you know, all the time. And I've had a little bit of success with Instagram. In fact, more, more so with Instagram than Facebook. I do get a few private sales through both, but not many. 99% um, of my work is sold through Blue Thumb. And the other 1% is private or through other online galleries. I then opened my own website and for a year and I closed it because it just was not successful. In fact, it was, I couldn't keep up with it. I didn't keep it up, keep, didn't keep it um, updated. Um, so I just closed the account, didn't work for me. 
So now I've registered with something called Artwork Archives, where you can actually archive all your work, you put in all your contacts, you can make um, um, a portfolio of your work, and you can go public if you want to. So I haven't tried going public, so I'm just trying this. Um, and it's not very expensive. So cross, fingers crossed, maybe, you know, um, that's linked. My paintings are linked to Blue Thumb through this too. Uh, so when I do go public, if people are interested in, in buying anything, they can get, they'll go straight to Blue Thumb. Um, sorry, I, I am nervous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'm bumbling a bit. Sorry about that. I also noticed that on posting on Blue Thumb the day the newsletter comes out, not the artist newsletter, but the general newsletter, which comes out on a Tuesday, regardless of whether you're featured or not, has brought in sales and more views on that day. So on a Tuesday, I just try and make sure I post something on Tuesday. Um doesn't matter what time but um yeah it works it has worked not all the time but it has worked so what works for me and what has worked for me on blue thumb is to post regularly that's once at least once or twice a week if you've got the work of course if i've got the work which i normally do um i've upped my prices just a little bit um, not much, so that I don't want to be priced out of the market. So I'm just, I slowly increase the prices just over a period of time. Um, and I've noticed that I don't get quite as many sales. So really, <laughs> it's the, uh, <laughs> well, it, ta it takes longer to sell. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I think, you know, the prices have to go up because everything else does. Um, so I think that's all I've got to say. And thank you, Blue Thumb. <laughs> The, <laughs> that's, that's the end of all the bullet points. <laughs> <laughs> that's the final point. That, that is, um, that was a great testimonial. I feel like if it almost felt like that we've coached you, Susan, <laughs> like just going point to point. You should, you should. Tell. Yes, I know. I'm well. I'm not very good at conversation, especially with in, with, with a you know live. It's all <laughs> no, new no, no. to me, so I needed to go just through the points. That's that's the way I do it. Yeah. Ne neither are we like yeah. we, we just you know we wing it, yeah, we wing it. <laughs> um thanks for that susan that yeah. that is really good um we have known the story for a while like you know we've been in touch we've been talking to you for ages you know when you started and it's i think it's i and i hope it's good for other artists to hear that as well directly from you mm -hmm. um but and i'm hoping that people i think some of some of the art some of them have um asked questions about a few things as well i think prices and stuff um so if you if you can have a look at you know the public comments um if you can find it no rush uh it's tricky sometimes but you know um the questions will keep coming in and we will keep answering them um <clears throat> do you want to talk about what you, you had to talk about yeah well i just had a i had a couple things that i wanted to talk to just generally everyone and Susan you're online so you might as well stay online and hear it um we had we had a couple of big trade sales go through this month and um Alex had a lot of you should put a lot of hard work into that and we're pretty like we love Alex and she's done great work um but what uh there was a few things that I talked to her about that could make her job a little bit easier and one of these things is searching for artworks. And the way when we put you into a curation or when we put you um, or when we're trying to find you, the title of your artwork is very, very important. And I think um, currently one word titles aren't enough information for us to search you. And it is very common for someone to just type in blue. And then we have pages and pages to go through to find you. So it can be a disadvantage um, just using a one-word title. Um, one way to also maybe think about it is if you use our search bar, because that's how we find you find your work, um, if you search your title in the search bar and if it doesn't come up in sort of that first search, then maybe you should think about retitling your work 
um, because it, it, it is quite hard to find. And that's something that has come up for Alex. And she said it would be a lot easier if we just had a few longer titles and a few distinguished titles. Um, so if you want, did you want yeah. to touch on anything? Yeah, about that? that's a really good point, actually. Um, another thing I would add is um, sometimes, and I know I've been on the other side uh, of this, I've been a graphic designer. And when you have to name your designs or your, your artworks, it's not easy sometimes. Um, but, you know, there have been artworks which are titled as untitled, one, two, until, you know, 20, or just a lot of uh, artworks are just titled the same. Uh, it is very important to have unique names for your artworks. So even if you just want to call it blue, call it something else and blue. So even for you, for a later stage, if you want to distinguish between you know two of similar style pieces, it's much easier. Plus, it obviously is very easy for us to talk about it with clients as well, because if you know they want, if there's any confusion between which artwork has to go and not, it can cause a bit of a, um, a bit of a confusion later on. Mm. And you you really want to make it easy for people to find your work. So that's just a point that I thought I'd bring up um, in the webinar. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is um, commissions. So we do take, uh, we kind of liaise between client and artist. And that, and by we, I mean myself, Shiraz, and sometimes Ed. Um, we organise commissions and um, a lot of the time, I think it, it's becoming more and more popular as people can realise they can get their custom piece by their artist and tweak a, little, a few things to make it special for themselves. Um, I just thought I'd tell you about the commission process that we do. Um, we normally, everything is agreed on before we take um, a money. So before we take a deposit money, we take money. <laughs> um, I'm just going to start again because I'm getting confused. So what happens is someone tends to inquire and we have a little discussion between artists. Sometimes they might want to speak to you um, over the phone just to make sure that we're on the right page and we're totally happy for that to happen. Um so anyway, it's discussed, the size is agreed on, the price is agreed on, and then um, we grab a 30% deposit from the uh, the buyer, and this deposit is 100% the artist. So it's um, for materials and time involved. So at the end, uh, sorry, halfway through, they do have one round of revisions, and these revisions... Um, can either be halfway or towards the end, whatever suits you, you as the artist because each practice is different. Um, and then if everything's agreed on, they upload the artwork to Blue Thumb um, and pay for everything in full. And then we do it like a normal sale. So it goes out. They've still got the seven-day return policy. And, um, yeah, so normally it's all good. I've been working here for almost a year now and – I've only ever had two um, sale commission sales that didn't go through. Um, if they don't go through, what happens is um, we refund, we return the artwork to you, so that's yours. We refund the buyer everything but the thirty percent, and then we give that thirty percent to you, and we don't make anything on the sale. So, um, and what we also do try to do is to not sort of lose faith with that customer, we tend to give them maybe a credit or a little voucher or something like that, just so they, you know, know that we try to do the right thing by them. And um, so that means that you guys get that 30% and you also get another artwork to sell if you choose to. So that's kind of very briefly how commissions work. If there was, do you want to add anything to that? Um, not particularly to commissions. Commissions are quite personal and obviously um, it, it's different with everyone. So, you know, with each individual artist and each individual uh, collector, it's different on how they want to approach it and how they want to go through it. 90% of the times it all goes smoothly, but obviously, you know, there have been times where um, people are not happy or sometimes they, uh, you know, things don't go well, but we try, um, we try quite hard that the artist is covered at all times. Um, and at the same time, it also sounds fair for the buyers. So, you know, they don't feel like we don't we don't ask for 50 percent upfront commission, which is non-refundable or anything like that. Um, but obviously, we have to keep something non-refundable just to make like for two points, mostly a that they're committed. So we need to make sure that they are actually 
committed to doing this rather than not jump someone who's just had a moment of interest into something and, and ask someone to start something and then later on say, oh, no, I have changed my mind. So that 30% non-refundable sort of deters people who are not really committed. And obviously, um, you know, they shouldn't at the same time feel like they have too much invested without actually seeing anything. Um, so it's a very fine line that we walk. Um, and again, returns, um, I do want to talk about returns a little bit. Returns are obviously um, not a happy thing. Um, that is a, that is something that happens. Um, we try to keep it as low as possible. Um, our overall returns rate on all our sales is just under 2%, which is a pretty good return rate given that we offer a no questions asked policy uh, plus returns um, are really expensive for us, which is uh, because, you know, the artwork comes back to you, uh, the buyers refund in full, but we've paid shipping from you to the uh, to the buyer and buyer to you. So it you know it's we tr it's pretty much our job to make sure that everything is happy and we never push people for buy to buy something if if we feel like that they're hesitating on something. So it's it's never that kind of thing. But returns do happen, um, and you know it's an ongoing thing and it's mostly about education and so for us for the buyers and for the artists. Um, yeah, but commissions are good because it gives people the option to get something uh, custom because a lot of times people like a design or an artwork, but they don't like, oh, they, the size doesn't fit or anything like that. So it, it gives them that option. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions about commissions or anything like that, um, do ask us. Uh, we, the com option for buyers to commission an artwork from you, they have the option on each and every artworks. Um, if the artwork is sold, they have that button to commission our artwork. If it is not, people can ask a question, which happens quite a lot. Um, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask now. Um, and if you have if you have any questions for Susan, please do ask that as well. She's still online. Mm -hmm. um, and we will just go through the comments now and yeah. just see if there are any questions and we'll answer them. There's someone, so Lisa just said, um, had several inquiry, blue thumb commission inquiries, but nothing has eventuated yet. This is really common. Um, just to let you guys know, we follow up four to five times before we give up. So if we don't, we send four or five emails with no response and then we give up on the inquiry. So we have your backs. We're, we're, don't worry. I know like you don't hear from us, but we set things aside and we make sure everything, um, we, we don't harass, harass is in the right word, but we, um, really push for that sale for you and that commission for you as well. So don't, don't think we don't have your best interests in, um, in mind. Um, Susan, I think Lola had a question, not a question, but um, she had a comment about pricing. Um, I'll just read it out for you. Maybe uh, you can answer it if you like. Um, okay. So she said, what a fabulous story, Susan. Congratulations. I find it difficult to price my art. That is what I want for the piece, then plus freight plus commission equals too much for, for my work. Do you want to address that? Um, yeah, I, I think pricing is difficult. The only thing I can say really is that it's worked for me having a, a, an affordable price on, on a painting. You tend, you tend to sell more. That's the that's the bottom line. It's, I mean, people really often go for the the cheap, and if if your work's of good quality and you've got a reasonable price on it, people will buy it. But pricing is difficult. But so far, so far for me, it's the affordable price, a fairly low price on the paintings, and just gradually increasing them over time. I think that's really good advice. Pricing is, like Susan said, quite difficult and quite personal as well. Um, we try and not um, advise too much to the artist because of how different it is for everyone. But like Susan said, it's it's all a matter of finding that right balance. Um, it's yeah, it's quite. Also personal. having sorry, Shiraz, I was just no, no. saying. Also having a range of uh, pricing on your on your 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 website page. So you can have f affordable and then more expensive pieces. So you have a bit of a balance. Yeah. Um, it, 
I just thought about it. It just came to me. Uh, I'll just talk about this. Last uh, in the last webinar, we talked about um, you know if there have been artworks on your profile which uh, have it, have been on there for a very long time and haven't sold. Um, you should try and re-upload them. So delete and re-upload them. We we got a bit of grief mm -hmm. from our team because <laughs> they had put them put a lot of artworks in curations and you know scheduled, other, yeah, scheduled, scheduled them to be featured on, on socials. socials and all that kind of stuff. And it stopped up a few things, but which we handled obviously. Um, but um, we did hear from a couple of artists uh, that that actually helped them as well. So they had a few artworks which were there for a while and they re-uploaded it and a couple of them sold. Um, so I don't, I mean, it could be just dumb luck. It could just be a chance. But, you know, if there have been, if there are artworks on your profile which have been there for a while and you think they have potential, um, try them. D don't do that for all of them at once. So spread them out, a, I would say about a week. But, you know, give it a go. I, I thought I'll talk about this before I forget because it's mm. off topic a little bit. <laughs> um, all right, just going through. Um, sorry, I'm just going through the comments. Yeah. Um, I think Melinda... Melinda said, uh, Melinda, your works are untitled uh, and numbered. Uh, it is fine sometimes, but obviously, like when it doesn't leave a mark in someone's mind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we are talking about two or three of your pieces, the idea that I can, I can uh, sort of um, put names to artwork pictures, it's very difficult without having an actual name and just having untitled and numbers. Um, overall, I think it's better to have for each artwork to have a unique name, um, but it's not a huge thing, you know, like mm -hmm. it's just, it's a bit more work. That's all it is. Yeah. And uh, that, I think how you've titled your works for that series in particular, it works. So don't, I don't, don't think that that's going to discourage buyers. I think it's fine to leave it like that. Yeah. Um, and Lisa, just touching on your point again, I know Sarah I answered it, um, this is this is this happens quite a lot. Uh, people talk about things, and I know I personally handled this commission for you, so I know what's gone there. Um, this happens. People think about that they want they really want something, and then they get in touch. Most of the times, ninety percent of the times, they're directly talking to us. So when we come to the artists, most of the things are already set. But it, um, but sometimes they do prefer to talk to the artist directly, which is fine. But um, and then at a later stage, sometimes they just realize you know, that they don't want to do this anymore or some, some expenses have come up or something has happened, which is natural and it's absolutely fine. And some people tell us, they let us know that, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Like we can't go through, this happened, that happened. And some people don't, so they just vanish. Um, so this does happen quite a lot. Uh, and it's it's quite, a, you know, it's, it's important and it's sort of like about 50% of people just drop off. So it's quite lucky when things actually go through for commissions. Um, Why is Shiraz? Because Shiraz is, he doesn't like people seeing his face. Also, he had a shave. Well, they can. <laughs> Wait, what happened? They asked why you're not in the frame. Oh. He doesn't oh. like being seen. He likes to be incognito. And also, he's just not as pretty as me. <laughs> oh, that's not very professional. Um. Just going through comments, guys. Sorry if I just look distracted. <laughs> um, Noela, with buyers and connecting with them directly, why are we not able to connect with the buyers directly or through BT? You know, just to see how we're going. Um, we do, uh, I think we've addressed this in the last um, webinars as well. We do get in touch with them, ask for updates. We also ask for, the, for photos. Um, some of them do get in touch with us and a lot of them don't um, because most of the time, I mean, just practically speaking, people buy artworks when they are in planning mode and they just leave them there um, and the installation or sort of hanging happens at a later stage. Quite like not a lot of times people get artworks and hang them directly. Um, 
but we do constantly ask people to send photos and we share them as well when that happens. Um, Jillian's asking, how do I promote that? I'll do specific commission work. I also do animals, which is popular quest to can commission work be more defined in some way. Um, Jillian, the profile on Blue Thumb is not very well designed at this point for um, something like this. Um, I agree. Uh, but at this point, the best way to do that is to mention a one-liner on your artwork descriptions or even at the top of your bio or just in your bio. Mm -hmm. It's important uh, people to read that, like especially the artwork description. So if you have some, if you do want to say something like this, you can mention it there. Um, profile bio is a pretty good place for, to do that. Yeah. Um, um, John's saying something similar. John Telcher is saying, um, I remember this case as well, John. Um, I passed that link. And that happens so often. Mm. I currently have three or four cases at this point right now where people are like, um, I'd like to talk to the artist directly. And we're like, no worries. Here's the email. Here's the number. And that's the end of it. And it just doesn't happen. Uh, most of it is probably because of time. They So in time, they might reach out to you. Um, we do follow up with them in sort of with increasing um, gap between every email. So we, if they reached out today, we'll follow up tomorrow, then we'll follow up two days after that, and then we'll follow up four days after that, and then we'll follow a week after that, and that's, you know, after a couple of that, we just drop it. Um, Susan, what are you talking about? Sorry if it goes quiet, guys. I'm just yeah. trying to read the comments. It's quite difficult sometimes. It keeps jumping. Um, Lisa, I'll just touch on your the pricing part as well. And I know you wrote into me, and um, it's the pricing. And I know I know where your point was before as well. It's it's really personal the pricing part for every artist. Um, and obviously, it depends on if you're painting full time, if you're painting large artworks, um, and the investment and all that. But it's just different approaches. Uh, what Susan was talking about. Um, it works for a lot of artists as well, um, having a range of artworks and, you know, like uh, just sort of starting at a low amount and then going on as you get more sales. Um, but it, that's not a universal advice. It works for different people. Um, you, you see that there are people who average, like on an average, they, their pieces are more than 1,500 or 2,000 baht, and they obviously sell as well. Um, Um, Nala, you can ask about watercolor. I'm not sure what your question is, um, but we can do that. Cool. I think that's the end of comments. Um, so we don't have a lot more to add. Uh, it, today was mostly about Susan and sort of what her story has been and how she's found us. And <laughs> I did want to add at when um, when she was uh, she was talking through the points that. It's by no means like by no means you have to be it has to be all good about blue thumb like this yeah. this webinar is not about you know say good things about blue thumb or something like that um so it's it we are an online platform and the thing is we are here like our main goal is to have to provide as many collectors to you guys as we can um, and obviously there will be good points like there will be good days there will be bad days there are things that work for people there, there there will be things which won't work for people and we understand that it's really difficult to build something that that works for everyone a hundred percent um but we we try to do that like obviously not every policy that we have and not every our, our approach will not work for 100 percent of the people but it works for most people and it you know we we try to to come up with a way which works best for both the parties. And we try to cover as much as we can. Um, 
So in this web and, and sorry, I'll just add one more thing. Uh, we will have more like we'll try and get more artists so you can get different points of view from people as well. And like I was just saying that this is by no means, you know, like we are not coaching anyone mm -hmm. about sort of talking about good things or anything like that. It's it's just uh, we just trying to just these webinars are just a platform where one uh, every couple of weeks, one of the artists on Blue Thumb gets a platform to just share what they have, what they do, how they approach things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because it's much, it's very different coming from us and it's very different coming from the artists themselves. Yeah. And I think just, just to touch on, on like what we're doing and what we're about, um, I feel like everyone in the office really genuinely cares for artists and like we, we really do want everyone to succeed and that's what it's all about. And um, we're hoping, you know, even with the webinars, this idea came from like we needed to communicate with you more and we needed to, um, you know, co like all, maybe like even coach, but not in that sense either. Like just, you know, give you advice and tell you how you can do better because we genuinely care. We genuinely care how you do. Yeah. Um, with pricing or watercolor and all that, I think they are usually uh, a bit lower than other media is because A, they're smaller, uh, B, most of them are sold unframed, which by no means is a requirement. You can sell them framed as well. Um, it's mostly just a choice uh, from the artist as well. With framing, we do uh, talk about um, them not having glass, or even if they do have glass, the frames do have glass, just pack them so that the glass is not directly like pack the artwork separately from the actual glass. So even if there is glass breakage, it doesn't actually affect the artwork itself. Uh, but by no means there is any sort of restriction on that. Um, um, Leslie Taylor, you said, why do you allow artists to upload many works at the same time? Um, it's just the way our system works when we don't, and we're not a restrictive, um, site. So, you know, with, you can have 300 works on your profile and, you know, that's, or you can have five, like it, it, we're not about limiting people or restricting people in that sense. So yeah, that's, if we started doing, if we started restricting uploads to one a day, it just wouldn't one artist, one work per it just wouldn't work. So that's probably, yeah. yeah. It, it's difficult to have a restriction um, on something like that. Um, we do quite often suggest people to not do that because mm -hmm. it doesn't actually work in their favor. Because what ha happens is if you have 20 artworks to upload, you upload them today and then that's it. And then, so they go through the feed and then they're buried down under. Rather, if you upload two artworks every couple of days, you will keep coming up on that and you get more and more um, exposure on, on the new feed. But we can't put that restriction because it might work for one person. Like it, it does sound fair from one person's point of view, but it might not suit uh, every artist um, and their timeframes. Mm. Uh, the, Lisa, the square shapes on the new art that was brought in primarily because um, the way initially how the how the images were, the landscape works because those tiles that you see so on a new art base they're three columns, and the so the width is fixed, but the height was adjustable before. So for portrait artworks, they would take even if they're like twenty by thirty or something like that, they would take a lot of space. But if there was a three meter long canvas, it would still look really small. So we had to make it square um, so that every artwork gets the same amount of screen space. Um, we have now on um, on web, like on PC and uh, Mac, when you move your mouse over that, you can see that the actual shape gets visible. Um, we'll soon have that uh, on all pages, so on your profile and on, um, on in curations and everything, that, that'll happen as well. And then we'll move on to mobile, um, and other devices as well. It's just there so that everything gets, uh, every artwork gets equal screen space. I took Leslie's advice and I'm being in the frame when I'm talking. Yeah. Good. <laughs> um, yeah. Which 
funny one? I'm just agreeing with a few of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Just internally. <laughs> Um, the square one does work for some artists and doesn't. Uh, that I understand that one feature request that is sitting in with and hopefully should go through. Um, hopefully should go through at some point of time is um, choosing the actual thumbnail that is visible on the feed. So uh, when you upload an artwork, if it is not square, you can choose <coughs> square thumbnail that might um that will show up like other uh i think other facebook and all that kind of places have that so we just we just building that in and should be should be available at some point of time mm. uh, melinda about newsletters i'll just check your email um it might there might have been some sort of unsubscription or uh, it might have gone to spam once or something like that um i'll if you if you want to email from your email to help at bluetham.com.au just so I have the right email and I can just check it for you. Oh, um, Peter, <laughs> we do have that feature. <laughs> we have the um, view on a wall feature. If you, it only works on I think works over thirty centimeters. Mm. And um, what you do is if you're on the artwork, you just hover over it, and on the left, top right, sorry. Or there'll be a blue box that says view on the wall. You just click on it, it shows you there. So yeah, we have it's that. it's limited for for some devices as well. So I think it's only yeah. on web at this point. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh. And it's again like everything that we push in, it's it all will improve in steps. So uh, there are a lot of different plans for that view on wall and uh, the square thumbnails and everything. But we have to first implement the very first stage, see how it's performing and how people are reacting to it, and then upgrade accordingly. Um, because it does affect a lot of wide, like a lot of different features when something is pushed in. Um, Dawn. Yeah, so uh, Dawn said, do you think it's important to have one style of work? This is actually is a pretty common question. I think as artists, you try to really find yourself and find, you know, where your art, art is going. And I know a lot of people have different styles, so they work on landscapes and then maybe nudes. And they are very different because it's, it's like they're mastering one skill, but then they're also interested in this other certain style. Um, I think it's fine. Like you, you're a creative person and you're on a creative journey it's fine to have more than one style and be interested in more than one sort of collection or category of your work. Um, the, what we see is that if you try to combine the two, um, it might it might not work as well because it might be at different stages. So that's when we suggest sort of using that reorder um, button and, you know, putting your, your, you know, the work that probably you've mastered the most of the style that you've mastered the most at the top um, and then, you know, just having it in, in lumps so they can sort of see your progression of work works really well. But I think definitely keep exploring and creating because it's really important. Um, I'll just address Peter's um, about digitally putting it on. Peter, obviously what Sachi has is different than what we do. Um, so it will never be, never be exactly the same thing, but I'll still double check and I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> um, thanks, Haley. Um, with framed and unframed pricing, Michelle, um, when when we did photography and prints, that was the idea. But we have a few things in, in the pipeline on how prints, unframed works, photography and original artworks are going to go. Um, so having the option of different sizes, say, for example, for prints and for framed and unframed pieces, that's something that is just it's sort of waiting for a few things to happen before and just where we want to go. Um, and it'll just based on that. So we've, we've really like intensely talked about that, those things and those kind of features and even the, <laughs> the designs are ready, but it's just base, based, oh, sorry, it's just waiting on a plan execution. Mm. Um, Nola, so you're saying I'd really like some help in tagging my work to work with the BT algo. Um, tagging has nothing really to do with the BT, uh, Blue Thumbs um, search algo or pop, pop, uh, popularity algorithm. Uh, tagging is 
mostly just to do with categorizing your artwork. So when you're tagging something, try to think what um, anyone would use to search for your artwork who doesn't know that your artwork still exists yet. So if you know you have a blue, uh, uh, if you have a blue abstract of some sort, then what all words can people actually use to tag to search for those artworks? And that will, that's what you have to think. There's no direct correlation or uh, the connection between the search algorithm on that. Search is pretty much so. Search how it works is it it prioritizes the search of uh, search results based on the exact match. So the the level of match. So if someone searches for your name, all your works will come up. Um, then when all of your works are done, then uh, it will search for first name and last name. So all the people who match the first name will have their works and then people with last names and, and so, so on and so forth. And then it prioritizes amongst that exact matches. It prioritizes based on popularity of artworks. So it has nothing to do with tags. So tags are exact matches. So if your name, so first it'll match your name, then artworks name, and then it goes for tags. Mm -hmm. And then after it tags, it'll go for uh, description. So if say, for example, um, you live in uh, Bandura and you have put that in your artwork description. So every artwork that's named Bandura will come up first. Then if any artist has Bandura in their name, they will come up first. And then the artwork with Bandura in their artwork uh, description will come up and then, oh, sorry, first tags will come up and then descriptions will come up. I hope that answers that question. Um, just a good handy tip on tags. If when you are writing them, make sure you also tag your name and also tag um, your locality. So even state or suburb really helps. Um, and also ready to hang if it's ready to hang. Just tip, just tips. Uh, Maria, yes, that um, I just talked about that a few minutes ago. Um, it will, uh, we will give you the option soon to select that thumbnail. That'll come up there. Cool. <laughs> yes, definitely tag your name. <laughs> that is a great thing. Um, Cool. We'll just, okay, so I think we've answered questions here, um, but we'll just wait around for a few more minutes. Um, Susan's still here, guys, just FYI. Um, so feel free to ask any questions to her, um, but we'll just hang around for a few more minutes and then we'll wrap up. But if you do have questions and if you do watch it after, please leave comments in the public comment section, which is under the video, not the chat. So we can easily see your questions and we can answer that. Uh, Rex, you don't have to add hashtags. So you can just add the, the actual, actual search term or actual tag, whatever it is. So for example, in your case, you can tag your name, Rex. You don't have to add that hash and you can add up to 200, I think. But it depends on how many you do want to this, you know, only to relevant ones. So if your artwork appears in a search where it's irrelevant, it actually doesn't really do any help, any, anything good for you. Oh. Let me get a blog on our profiles, help build content on the site. Um, and that's a good suggestion, but I'm not sure if that, it will require a lot of uh, dev work so it will require a lot of coding work and I'm not sure if that's happening anytime soon um, unless uh, we change the way profiles look which might happen um, I would say in about six to eight months uh, but not right away be, because our blog works separately and it, you know it's uh, if you follow it you'll see like it has different topics and stuff having an artist dedicated blog for each artist on their profile. It's something that we haven't discussed about. Um, thanks, Tom. Um, cool. I 
that's Megan. Yeah, okay, cool. I think just Megan and Freddie has just answered Peter's question about Sachi. Where, um, cool. Yeah. And yeah, um, um, like Haley said, uh, if you guys have joined in Latron, go through what Susan was talking about before Latron and do ask questions. Uh, if we can pass on um, the question to Susan, if we can answer them, we'll answer them ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, or we'll just uh, get, if you do have questions, we'll just get Susan to write them out and put them on the Facebook or something like that. Yeah. That's all we, that can always work. Thanks, Megan. <laughs> um, cool. But yeah, great webinar. Love you guys. Had fun. Susan was great. Where are you, Susie? <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I don't think I was that good, really. But anyway. Oh, you were. You were. I don't, you won't realise. I think people will start emailing you and just say, everyone, email Susan and tell her how great she is. She needs to hear it. Um, Happy to answer yeah. any questions, though. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you did great, Susan. You shouldn't. Thank you. Thank you. you. Wonderfully. For the fir your first ever artist, you can totally claim that. Oh, was I the first? Well, thank you. you. Were the first, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. Yeah, good, good. And then you got to hear us ramble as well, which was nice. <laughs> no, I learned some things. That's terrific. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. So right. we will be in touch in two weeks' time um, with a possible announcement of a Melbourne meetup, TBC, not yet confirmed. Um Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I just do -do. Bye. Do -do.